All right, I'm doing a, a, a bit of a, well, not a bit. This is totally a male idea. This is the first time that I've actually picked an idea and all I have is, is the idea itself. It's the first time that I picked the idea and that it was, um, what do you call it? Uh, that it was, it, it was intentionally a male idea. I don't think there's any relation to this idea to females at all. Uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll explain to you why you might say, well, well, Okay, so it's all being hard, right? Now, I'm not saying being tough. I'm not saying being durable or anything like that. I'm using the word hard. Now, when we think of that word, it's, it's, it, 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 has a, it, it has its own meaning. It just has nothing to do with females, okay? It's nothing about females being hard. It's nothing like that. Now, back to the point, you know, because this is, this is something that comes up in the male mind a lot. I know it came up in my mind since I was very young. I mean... I was very young. I remember. I don't even remember what the DVD was called. I found a movie and then a torrent or something, and I was a teenager at the time, and I, and it was about uh, prison, you know. And I wanted to watch it because I, because because everybody knows whenever you think of the hardest guy in the world, you think of prison or jail, right? And there's a common uh, term. It's called hardened criminals. You know, you become hardened from doing time. You know, what I mean the time. The time. Uh, hardens you, right? What is what is it? A diamond is like super hard. You cannot even compress a diamond, you know, and the, not with your bare hands. Um, but it was called, who cares about what they say, how it was made? It was supposedly made in fire and compression and crazy heat and all this stuff. And then that formed a diamond. After all that stuff it went through, it became a diamond. Now, you know, um, again, again, I've been a big fan of that since I was very, very, I was only, I shouldn't, okay, I'll say it, you know, I will, well, I shouldn't say this. Okay, but since I was a kid, you know, these things were always on my mind, you know what I mean? And, um, and typically, you always think about who's the hardest, you know what I mean? Um, now, let's get a little bit into what is the meaning specifically. Well, somebody who's hard, typically, when you think of that, you think of somebody who's very masculine and strong, all right? Not spoiled, like the opposite of spoiling, of, of you know, being spoon fed and all that, you know, when you think of the hardest guy, like, like, to be honest, I'll tell you movie wise, if I was going to give you an example, it's, it's Brad Pitt, man, Brad Pitt plays. And, and to be honest, in my opinion, out of actors, and I know, I, but by the way, actors are good looking. They're very strong. They're in very good shape. Okay. You can't be a dud and become a top level actor. Okay. I'm talking about Pierce Brosnan, Jason Statham, Brad Pitt, um, um, who else? Uh, oh, Danny Trejo, right? Uh, I'm trying to think about Denzel. Well, I don't know about Denzel. No, not really. I wouldn't say Denzel. But, uh, Terry Crews. Okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you, you think of these kind of guys. You know what I mean? And, 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 and these guys are very hard. Now, I think Brad Pitt played the perfect hard. Okay, I'll tell you why. All right. Fight Club, when he was Tyler Durden. Okay, I know he wasn't supposed to be an actual person. But when he was Tyler Durden, to me... That dude was real hard. All right. Well, when I saw that movie, I was like, wow, I was scared. You know, I saw, I, I was scared for Edward Norton, to be honest, because Edward Norton was just a nice guy who worked an IT job and, and he was a nester. So he just liked buying Ikea furniture and ordering furniture for his shitty little, well, his apartment was pretty nice, by the way, but it was a shitty, it, I mean, it was a little, it was a little spot, but it was, a, it was, a, it was technically, it was a, it was a pretty decent and nice apartment. But it, all he did was buy furniture for that place. You know what I mean? He had no life. You know what I mean? And 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 his job was his life. You know. And then Tyler Durden comes in, and the first night they meet on the airplane, they hang out outside the bar in the in the parking lot, and, and, and Tyler and Tyler Durden, which is Brad Pitt, beats the shit out of Edward Norton. Right? He tells Edward Norton to hit him. Edward Norton hits him, and then he just beats the shit out of him. Um, and, and, and for some reason, Edward Norton likes being beat the shit out of and, and he decides that he wants this guy as his friend. So he declares him his friend. Now he's hanging out with him all the time. And, and before you know it, his world is nothing like what it was. Not only that, but Tyler Durden has created an army of guys who are willing to do, and willing to execute well-made plans and stuff. I mean, it's crazy, right? Okay, let's forward to Snatch. I didn't want because when I gave Brad Pitt's name, I gotta give you another one. Snatch when he plays the Pikey. Um, so Jason Statham, who plays Turkish, is narrating the scene where he knocks out uh, Gorgeous George, which is a big guy, and he narrates and he says, um, "Turns out that the Pikey was a gypsy bare knuckle boxing champ 
which makes him harder than a coffin nail. That was quote, the, quote for quote. I hope I got it exactly right. I do believe I may be wrong, but that was quote the quote exactly what he said. Okay. <laughs> All right. And, um, you know, that's what I think of. I think of, I think of, that's why I think of Brad Pitt. I think of those two characters. It's the hardest guys in the world. Now, uh, granted, I, I, I mean, you know, we think of, okay, I've talked about blood and blood out, right? So we think about blood and blood out. I mean, it starts right from the beginning. So, so Mikolo, who, who has a white father who, and, and he comes out looking white with blue eyes and everything. Uh, he, he hangs out with his mother's, uh, uh, his cousins and his friends from his mother's side were all Hispanic, right? So he's hanging out with all these guys and they always give him shit and make fun of him for being white, right? He catches that charge, that murder charge, and, and, and he, he's guilty of it. He, he comes to prison, right? And I still remember, you know, he walks into the main canteen and these uh, transvestites who are very strong, by the way, don't think transvestites are necessarily physically weak. Some of them are very physically strong. Okay, they're stronger than like your your strong man. So so uh, three of them approach him because they think he's cute, and they start giving him. They start throwing lines at him to flirt with him. He doesn't like. He calls one of them a faggot. They grab his arm and they're intimidating him. And he's and she's too strong for him. He can't even do anything. And then this guy comes out who's a pimp in <laughs> in the in the prison. And he basically stands up for him, right? He tells him you got the wrong guy. Yeah, so hey, where'd you get that tattoo from? Now, it turns out that both of them are from the Vatos Locos gang. Where'd you get that tattoo from? Oh, I got it from here. Oh, that's cool. You know this guy? Yeah, I know that guy. He's my buddy. Let me show you around. So he starts showing him around. He shows him the black section, the white section. Finally, he takes him to the Hispanic section where there's, uh, what was his name? Magic, right? There's Magic. The, the big, scary looking guy, big mustache, you know, scary looking inmate, right? And what does he say to him? Well, when he see what so, so the pimp goes, "Hey, look, it's Mikolo from the barrio, right?" He shows him the, his his VL tattoo, and the, and Magic says, "So you're the dude that does the spider?" And he goes, "Yeah, just kind of I can't do it, all right." But he does something like that, and he goes, and he shows him his tattoo, and he goes, "Look, you know, I'm the, I'm the I'm the ga same gang as the guy you killed." So he goes, "If a rep is what you're looking," for, he goes, "You're the one who does the spider." He goes, if a rep is what you're looking for, killer, then I'm your man. And then he goes, or whatever, and he scares the shit out of him, right? <laughs> scares the shit out of Miklo. Poor Miklo is here on his first day to prison, and this is what he's dealing with, you know what I mean? So it's crazy, but, uh, but, but that's typically what we think of, you know what I mean? Whenever we think, of, we think of somebody hard, and we always assume that the person has done at least two or three years, has done some kind of time, you know what I mean? Um... That's a big deal. Um, so, you know, I, I think I think I think we're gonna do a two-part video for this. Should be long enough. So, you know, for example, you know, when, when we were kids, I remember. So, I wasn't particularly hard. Now, did I think I was hard? Definitely. Was I actually hard? No, I was not hard. I thought I was hard since I was a little kid, and I always thought I was hard, but I was not hard. Okay, and I'll tell you, I, I'll tell you why I was not. Hard. I, I wasn't anything because I was at level zero or one. And that, did, that basically meant that I wasn't shit because in the world, I wasn't anything. So I wasn't hanging out with certain people. I wasn't doing certain things. You know what I mean? I, you see what I'm saying? I wasn't, I wasn't anything. I was just level one. You know what I mean? I was always level one, not number one. Don't confuse it with numero uno. I wasn't number one. I was, I was level one, okay? Which meant that I, I, I could manage to hang for a little bit um, until I was on my way out because it was obvious that I was level one. So I wasn't hanging with anybody really as an adult. Who am I going to, as a kid is different. Kids worlds are, are, are different. But as an adult, who am I going to hang out with? Man, I'm level zero or level one. You know, I, you know what I mean? I don't got anything. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm a cheap, cheap motherfucker, a cheap asshole. Uh, cheap in the, not in money wise, but I was cheap. I told you about cheap tricks. I use cheap tricks like, 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 like just to keep people off me, you know, just to, so it's, the person could be at a, at a bit of a higher level than me and I use a cheap trick because I was the top of the level once. So I, you know, use that cheap trick and I'd stay among people in level one. I'd stay in that particular group, you know, while being alone, but I was associated with that group, which was level one, right? So I couldn't be anything really at that point. You know, yeah, prior to prior to December of last year, prior to New Year's, I couldn't be anything. You know what I mean? I couldn't be anything. How the hell was I gonna be anything? I wasn't. Let, I wasn't living in the world, man. How the hell was I gonna grow or become anything? So, anyways, the point is that uh, that I did think I was hard, but I was not hard. 
right? But I remember being a kid right away, you know, especially in, in, in the boys, uh, boys are trying to prove who's the hardest, right? So they start, boys are watching wrestling. So they go, okay, let's go wrestle in the, in the park. And so I'll be honest, I never wrestled in the, in the park. I didn't used to, they, they were all into Stone Cold Steve Austin and Undertaker, and then they would go wrestling and body slam each other and things like that. You know what I mean? Or there was Bloody Knuckles, the one where you would pop. I, I don't even know how to play it. I never played it. I just realized that like in a couple of months, I just started feeling it and I just started doing this and it didn't bother me when I got upset or angry. It, it just, it just, it just me and my character growing into what it is. That's all it is. You know what I mean? But uh, I started thinking, and now I feel like I really am hard. Cause sometimes I go outside and then, and, and, you know, I can, you know, I, I can get away with like, <laughs> it doesn't matter how big a dude is, you know, you can just, you know, break them down. You know what I mean? It, it, dude can be so huge and, in size and stature, and you can just knock them out, you know, and put them on the ground, you know what I mean? It happens, you know what I mean? That shit like that happens. So, I mean, there's that. But, 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 and now let me, let me tell you what it's not associated with. It's not really associated with being a knucklehead. Now, let me explain that. So, uh, I watched a documentary a long time ago. It was on Australia. Now, now, as you, okay, brief history on Australia. Australia was picked as a prison for the worst and the hard, the hardest and no, that's not hard, the worst criminals of England. Okay, all the worst criminals of England, like the worst ones, were sent to Australia because it was far away. It was an island. There was nothing there. So they built a prison. They built prisons there, and they sent the criminals there. They say the fathers of Australia are prisoners or or or, or, or convicts. They were convicts. Eventually, they got free, and those are the people who laid the foundations for Australia. It was hardened criminals okay now i watched this documentary it had to do with an issue like an epidemic type of issue that australia was having and it, i believe in sydney which is their capital city the issue they were having it was called one punch knockout okay what would happen is that australians love from what i saw australians love partying hard and drinking way more than the british okay i mean it, so the whole thing is that these guys saturday night sydney is supposed to be insane especially downtown sydney it is insane guys even girls have these fights but guys get in groups and typically what happens is that guys get drunk so they're in the club they're drunk so there was a story there was a bouncer okay he was like six foot six he was a kickboxing champion okay he was a kickboxing champion he was a bouncer he was standing by himself in one part of the bar so these five guys were getting drunk, talking to each other, and they, and they pick one of the guys and they go, hey, go knock him out. The guy walks up to him, this guy doesn't even hit but he walks up to him, he doesn't know what he's doing, and he goes, bam, and, and he talks about how he got hit, and he was just knocked out on the floor, right? We're talking about a big kickboxing champion. But what, what I wanna say is that's not really being hard. That's like, cause it, you see, that's why they kind of associate a certain amount of time in prison with, with or a long term, you know, at, with something being hard. And the reason is that you cannot just be hard in where you knock somebody out or something. To be hard, you really gotta like, like you got, like, like you said, cough and nail in Snatch, right? Cough and nail, iron. They used to call Mike Tyson iron Mike Tyson. You know, hard is like durable, hard is not wimpy, hard doesn't complain, hard doesn't cry, hard is like, you know, everything just hard, you know, there's no other way to put it. So it's not about, you know, oh, I can go shoot somebody or stab them and I'm hard. It doesn't really work like that. You know, a person just hardens, you know, just something that just is created in you. You know what I mean? But I'll tell you one thing. For me, when it comes to uh, uh, being hard, it comes to being uh, smart, I'd rather be, uh, no, no, not rather, but I put smart over hard, you know? And that's why I try to exercise my mind regularly. I, I, I think this is exercising my mind also. I mean, not really, but, you know, <laughs> at some point I try to exercise my mind, okay? You know, 